So just picture the scene. The Jewish people just finished building the Mishkan. They didn't just finish building the Mishkan. The Mishkan was, lit, finished, was finished being built on Kafe Kislev. They waited Dafka to Aleph Nisan, the first day of Nisan, to celebrate and to inaugurate the Mishkan. For seven days before this, Moshe Rabbeinu is the acting Kohen Gadol. He's a Kohen Gadol elect, right? Not elect, really, but he's not taking over. To educate Aaron and his children exactly what to do, detail by detail, what's going to go on in the Mishkan on a daily basis. All the halachos, everything. And now, everyone's there. It's Alf Nisan. It's the first day. Three korbanos are going to be brought. The Jewish people are there. And not just the Jewish, all of Klai is there. There's a sense of excitement. Right, there's a palpable level of excitement that's there. People feel they're coming for the first time to see the grandeur and the majesty of the Mishkan. And it's amazing. It's beautiful. And everyone's standing there, the, the Torah says. And then what happens? Vayomer Moshe Aaron, Moshe tells Aaron, Aaron, Krav El HaMizbeach. Come close to the Mizbeach. Vaseyes Chataschcha. He had to bring a Korban Chatas. And that will bring kapara for you, for the Jewish people. And bring a korban for the Jewish people. And you're going to achieve all this amazing kapara. So, why does Moshe need to tell Aaron, Krav el Hamizbeach? Doesn't Moshe know? Didn't we, go, didn't we practice this time and time again? Didn't we go through all the things that are going to happen? Like, you can only imagine over those seven days, not, they just didn't learn all the details of the halachos, but they, they went through what's, everyone's going to be there, right? And this is like the big show, and you're going to come to the Mizbeach. It sounds like there was some type of hesitation here where Moshe needs to tell Aaron, hello, you're up, you're on, right? Jump onto the stage, you're there. So what's going on? So, says Rashi on this Pasuk, Shehaya Aaron Bosh. Aaron was embarrassed. Viyare la Geshes. And he was afraid to go up. So, Pashup Shah, why was Aaron afraid? Who am I? Moshe had Anivas. His brother had Anivas too. He was extremely humble. Why, what, do I deserve this? And Moshe had to encourage him and say, Aaron, you're the man. God chose you. Lama Ata Bosh. Kach Nivcharta. You were chosen, Dafka, because you have this mida busha, specifically because you don't think you deserve to be the one. You are the one, right? In Klal Yisrael, a leader doesn't choose to be the leader. That's Korach. <laughs> the, the leader is chosen, right? Someone doesn't like put up a sign and say, "I'm the Gadol Hador, come and ask me Shailus." The Gadol Hador is an Anabi Koladam. That's uh, Moshe, following that paradigm of Moshe Rabbeinu. And that's really what Rashi says here and depicts this really beauty, real beautiful picture of Aaron Akohen. The Ramban says something. I really want to focus on this Ramban. It's a, it's a powerful Ramban. The Ramban writes that Aaron had one mistake, one big mess up on his ledger. What was that? Chete Egel. His involvement in Chet Egel is a big question mark as to what was Aaron thinking, what was he doing, what was his big long-term plan. It's not clear in the Pesukim, and it, it's left to the Rishonim and Achronim, the Mepharshim of the Torah, to really delve into that. But whatever it is, the Ramban says, is that this Avera haunted Aaron Akohen. These are my words for the Ramban. They haunted Aaron, and this one mistake literally followed our around. And wherever he went, he slept at night, he dreamt of the ego. He walked, he saw the ego and thing, in places where you don't normally see the ego. And says the Ramban something so powerful. Aaron Cohen is standing in front of the entire nation. He's got Moshe to his side and he turns around and he has the Mizbeach there. And now it's his turn to take the mantle of leadership of Cohen Gadol Right? And, and lead the people. He turns around and he looks at the Mizbeach. You know what he sees? He doesn't see a Mizbeach. He sees an Egel. Now why does he see an Egel? The Ramban says that the, the Mizbeach has horns, corners. They're called Karnos HaMizbeach. 
that that he, that it has, and Aaron is like, I can't do this. I don't deserve to be the person. I made the biggest mess up. I don't deserve to be here. Who am I? I've made so many mistakes in my life. And Moshe Rabbeinu says to him, No, Aaron. The kach nifcharta. Because you don't, you're not Hori, you don't stay. You're the man. You go up and you do it. But those sins haunted him forever. The Shemi Shmuel, Sakash Rebbe, has a great insight into, the, into a Gemara. The Gemara wants to know, how did Yaakov, and I want to talk about this Indian of the sins, Averos, haunting us, mistakes, haunting us forever. If you remember, about eight years, I think eight years ago, it was right around the time that I was, um, I was elected as the assistant rabbi here. What, what happened? There was a, there was a guy, it's uh, opening day baseball today, right? So, so there was a guy that was pitching a no-hitter. It was the ninth inning. Maybe it was a perfect game. Taco, it was a perfect game. Ninth inning, two outs, and it was a very close play at first base. Remember this? And the ump called him safe. It was before instant replay was allowed, uh, review was allowed in, um, in baseball, and they called him safe. The camera clearly showed the guy was out. Right? It got the ump for a certain amount of time. Couldn't, you know, it was so different. Do you imagine, like, he ruined, right? This, this rookie, I think it was a rookie or a first, second year guy, became nothing. I don't think he's playing baseball anymore. That was his time to shine, and he lost it all. They ended up writing a book together about owning your mistakes. <laughs> right? You got to capitalize. It's America. You got to love America. You know, you got to capitalize on that. But, but really, in reality, like, so many of us, like, we become our mistakes. We, we, we can't move on, we can't grow, because this is who I am. And it's not just that, we like see it everywhere. We become like Aaron Akon, we become and we become like paralyzed. We become stuck. So the Gemara wants to know, how did Yaakov Avinu encounter the Sarah Shal Like, what, like, how did this guy like say like, hey, what's going on? You wanna have a fight? You wanna beat each other? Like, wh- how did they encounter each other that, that he engaged with him? If he said, I want to beat you up, if he like was a mugging, what would happen? He'd run away. So how did they engage? So the Gemara has two completely disparate opinions. One opinion is in the Gemara, it's Chulan Tzadi Alpha and Beis. Reish Lakish says, sorry, Reish Lakish says, he says, Ke'ovei kochavim nidmelo. He appeared as a regular non-Jew, as a Gentile, as a, maybe as an idol worshiper. Maybe he asked him for directions, and then he sucker punched him. And the other opinion is, this is Rav Shmuel Bar Acha, um, said, Mishmei de Rav Bar Ula, Ki Talmud Chacham Nidmelo. He appeared to him as a Talmud Chacham. He came to him asking him, Shilas. So, now, what does this mean? Yaakov Avinu engaged and countered the, the Satan, or evil incarnate, some say, in the Sarah Shleisav, in the Malach Leisav. He either appeared to him as a Tamad Chacham or as an Oved of Odezara. So, what does this mean? The Shem Yishmuel says it represents the Yetzirah. The Yetzirah can attack us in two different ways. Sometimes the Yetzirah can attack us by saying and, you know, enticing us to do really bad things. Tavos Ros. There's a lot of enticing things out there on the internet, out there in the streets. And that's the other way is that sometimes we, we convince ourselves that we're doing the right thing and really we're making mistakes. So it looks like we're being tzaddikim, tzidkaniyos, but really we're not, really we're messing up. That's kitam and chacham nidmelo. Rabbi Baruch Simon, Shlita, one of the Rosh in a Sefer Imei Baruch, which is excellent, had Builds off the Sukkot Shavu Rebbe. He quotes the he quotes Shem Yishmuel in his Sefer, and he adds one Nakuda. He says that sometimes the Eitzar comes to us and attacks us in our mistakes. 
and says to us, you can't be somebody that goes to Minyan three times a day. You can't be somebody that takes davening seriously all the time in a serious kavana because look what you did in the past. So that's not like a Yetzirah of an Oved of Odezara. That's like a Talmud Chacham type of Yetzirah. Right? You make mistakes. You've messed up. Look what you did in high school. Look what you did in college. That's, you want to be somebody else? You can't be that person. So that's what Aaron Hakohen was feeling at this moment. I can't be the guy. I can't be the Kohen Gadol. We can't be somebody that we want to be because look who we are in our past. And we have very few writings of the Baal Shem Tov. Most of the Torah that we have of the Baal Shem Tov comes from his Talmidim. Mainly the main writer, anyone know who the main writer, author of the t- Baal Shem Tov's Torah was? Matt? No. He, he told over the Torah. Who wrote it down? The Todos Yaakov Yosef. The Degel Achim Ephraim, the Rakhav Yosef of Palinoi. But there's one safer that we do have for the Baal Shem Tov. It was his last will and testament. They put it into a safer. I have it at home. It's uh, like 30, 40, 50 pages. And I want to share with you one, a few lines from here. He writes like this. Lifamim, Mateha Yitzhahara Adam. Sometimes the Yitzhahara tricks us, tries to deceive us. The Omerlo, Sha'avar Avera Gadola, Afa Pish in El Chumra Baoma. Sometimes the HR says, You're such a mess up. You screwed up. You made such a big mistake when really, we didn't mess up. It was a Chumra, right? It wasn't such a big Avera. It wasn't such a big mistake. Or it wasn't an Avera at all. And what's the goal of the Yetzirah? The goal of the Yetzirah is to make us depressed, to make us sad in our worship of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in our service of God, in our vote to Hashem. Some, right, we make mistakes. We are human beings, and by definition, I'm not sure who said it, Ur is human, who is that? Somebody, you'll Google it. Some philosopher. <laughs> but it's it's really true. Like, we, we, we all mess up. And... The Baal Shem Tov warns us that to get into that state after the mistake, sometimes the mistake is bound to happen. We're going to mess up. But how do we react afterwards? What do we say? I think in Ma'ariv we say, save us from the Satan, that's me'acharenu and lefanenu. So I think I heard this from the Meishi Loach that we ask Kaddish Baruch Hu to save us from the Satan. That's before us and in front of us. So what does that mean? So before us is, sometimes there's a mistake in front of, you know, in a Vera that we can't, that we're not going to come. So Kaddish Baruch Hu save us that we don't mess up. But if we mess up, what's even worse sometimes? The downward spiral that we go into. If this is who I am, right, this is my mistake, and that's who I am. It defines who we are. In Parsha Shoftim, it's such an amazing insight. I promised I was going to say something from the Fekatsuka Rebbe. Fekatsuka Rebbe says something amazing. So we have the four exemptions of war. The four exemptions of war? Newly married. Newly married. What else? Yeah. New house. Buys for Lohan Acho. Once we'll get to yours in a second, Robert. The field. The field. Not to Karim, not to Karim. So not to Karim just got married. Arasisha, they not um, and the fourth and the fourth one is someone who's so afraid that they're going to end up influencing so, people. Oh, so all the Torah says is Hayare Varachaleva. If somebody is afraid and is like weak-hearted, so the Gemara wants to know is what does it mean afraid and weak-hearted? Like, let's give me a definition. What does that mean? Yare varachaleva. So it's a machlokis in the mission between Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Seglili. Rabbi Kiva says it's somebody that talks between Yishtabach and Baruch. Whoa. Yushalmi says it's somebody that talks between Sol and Shalyad and Sol Sharosh. It's pretty bad. That person, don't go to war. Don't go to war. Rabbi Yossi Aglili says it refers to the Averos Shebiyado. What does that literally mean? 
The Avera should be Yado. The Avera in your hands. So, ask the Katsuka Rebbe, if the Torah, Rebbe Sikhli, wants to teach us that it's refer- that person's afraid of the Averus that they did, what should the Gemara say? Averus Asa. What does it mean, Averus Sheh Biyado? He says that the person that walks around with their Averus clenched in their fists, holding on to them, it's in their pockets. They can't let go. They can't move beyond. They can't grow. Because this is who I am. It, it defines me. Don't bring that guy to war. He's not only going to make everybody crazy. Right? He's going to think he's not worthy. Because Baruch wants to tell us we are worthy. We are worthy. To make mistakes makes, means we're human. There's an amazing shot. One of my good friends just wrote a book. Rabbi David Bashevkin. It's called Synagogue. S-I-N. Um, in the nature of the nature of sin, and he has an amazing horror there. It's an amazing horror in one of the chapters. He he shares a, a major difference between Christian and Jewish thought, with one nakuda, and it's something that we take for granted. When did the first sin occur? When did the chait adam and chava occur? According to Chazal, when did it occur? Before Shabbos. Right before Shabbos, six day of creation, right. According to Christian Christianity thought, when did it happen? After Shabbos. So he makes an f- amazing ha'ara. He says like this. According to Torah, according to Chazal, it happened, mistakes, sin, was part of creation. It was part of creation. To sin and to do tshuva is part of creation. It's almost normal. According to Christianity, creation's perfect. Post creation, man sins. Man's forever doomed. Right? It's a big, it's a major nakuda in a lot of the philosophy of Christian theology and our theology. Right? It's, an ama- it's such a sharp point. It's worth buying the book just for that, but it's, there's a, a lot more to read in the book than just that nakuda. And I think that, that really, just open this again, that really gets back to our point, right? That that's, what, what do we do with our mistakes? What do we take them? So one road is to say, we do tshuva. And the Rambam writes in Hechos Tshuva, Beis Beis, that Yazov Chote Mecheto, Yazov Merisho, and you have to become a completely different person. You have to completely change. You have to ignore your past and become somebody completely different. And that's one Mahalich. That's one Mahalich, right? Com- com- become a completely different person. Ignore your past. Your mamish brand new. But we also believe, we also believe, the pre writes this, that it's Dafka, and Rav Hutner writes about this also in a famous uh, essay, a famous letter, Kisheva Yippo Tzadik Vikam, that a Tzadik falls seven times, and then he gets up. So Rav Hutner says, what's the Pashup Shat? And a tzaddik falls seven times and they keep on getting up. No. The person becomes a tzaddik because they fell seven times and they continue to persevere. The pre tzaddik writes this explicitly Yisrael noflim viomdim. The way of a Jew is they fall down, they mess up, and then they continue to get up. We call it Gemar Makos, it's a completely different halacha, but it's called Yerida Litzorech Aliyah. Perhaps a different level is to dafka use the points when we've messed up, when we've made mistakes, when we failed and when we faltered, and use those as growing points in our lives. Use those dafka, use those challenges so we can grow. So we can grow as individuals, as people, and help people around us that make mistakes and educate them that it's part of life. It's part of life. And I think it's such an important point that when we go into the Mishkan, and even the Mishkan itself, the Mishkan, according to Rashi, was Dafka created because of Chetega. Chetega. Right? But look what it created a beautiful edifice to house a Kaddish Baruch. How amazing. And think of all these other mistakes that were created throughout the world, you know, secular and Torah wise, that were created because of mistake. Mistake is part of creation. 
Adam and Chava sinned on the sixth day of creation. It wasn't perfect. It's not supposed to be perfect, we can argue. But our job is to persevere, to continue on in our own lives, continue to grow, and not let our sins become a Hirosh Abiyado, become sins that we hold on to, keep in our pockets and close to us, and don't let them define who we are. And we should take Chizuk, Aaron Akohen, Moshe tells him, Kravala Mizbeach, we should take that as a call to all of us, that the little Moshe Rabbeinu inside of all of us is telling us, you can do it. You can achieve so much more. You've gone to great places, you've gone to great lengths, but there's so much more we can achieve. Krav al continue to grow closer and closer to Kaddish Baruch Hu, through Torah, through Tefillah, through learning, through breaking our midos, and through working on ourselves, we can achieve a tremendous amount together. Have a great job.